You are listening to the Scaling Culture Podcast, where we sit down with thought leaders who share their experiences building incredible workplace cultures. Jody Rabinowitz is the Head of Talent and Organization Development at Zoom Video Communications and former Head of Talent Acquisition and Organizational Development at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, where she implemented a five-year strategic plan focused on enhancing the employee experience. She honed her nimble leadership approach as a talent advisor at the Center of Creator Leadership and through her early career in social work. Today, Jody shares with us everything about the culture at Zoom and what makes an amazing Zoomie. Welcome to another episode of Scaling Culture Podcast. I'm extremely excited to host Jody Rabinowitz today with us, who's Head of Talent and Organizational Development at Zoom. Jody, welcome. Thank you. So happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we were so I was so excited. You know, Nick, who typically uh, books uh, the pre conversations for our guests. Sometimes I just look at my calendar and I'm like, "Wow, Jody from Zoom. This is going to be great." I was so excited. And then when we had our, our original conversation, you know, your energy is on fire, and I loved it. I was really kind of you gave me energy after that conversation. So thank you for that. Thank you. So, so Jody, I, I mean, Zoom is, it, it's like, it's like the, the new, uh, the new buzzword. Everybody, it, 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 I feel like Zoom is like Uber for taxis. And when I say that, people are not even saying um, uh, video conferencing. They're just using the word Zoom. Would you, you, you know, let's Zoom together. That's incredible that the brand has really picked up like that. So, can you walk us through how did Zoom how did how did Zoom win? How did they move so quickly? I'm just curious how they came to the the the, the forefront here in um, video communications. Um, yeah, my husband always says it's great when you're a verb and a noun and like we're, we're you know no one says tissues they say Kleenex right so right um, I love it. How did we get here? Um, well, you know I'm not the most techie person, but I could say we have a phenomenal product. Um, it's just super user friendly and you know the way people describe it is you know my 6 year old can zoom and so can my elderly grandmother and i think part of what's made this um, made us boom um, in the midst of the pandemic is because people are so disconnected and because zoom was giving away you know you know gives away free minutes people were using it to you know engage their grandparents or parents or you know you know, all over. And so that user friendliness, I think, became pervasive. So, I mean, because yeah, two things yeah. that stood out there is you, you said a, a small child and a grandparent. And so if that's the focus of the user experience, then it has to be simple. And I would agree as you're saying that I'm like, yeah, this is, you know, because sometimes I'll get on a- other platforms, and I can't get on I'm frustrated. Zoom is very simple. So simple. I mean, I can do it, put it that way. Um, and <laughs> It, the, um, you know, it, it, Zoom wasn't built for, you know, the, you know, a grandmother or a six-year-old. It was really built as an enterprise product and that's the space that, the, you know, originally that we wanted to play in. So, um, and also in the middle of the pandemic, our CEO gave away um, to elementary schools all over the world free Zoom because wow. he's so committed to, um, you know, education. So, you know, kids were learning how to use it. And now it's just, again, it's just become part of the nomenclature. So let's stay on that. So who was Zoom before? And you, and you said enterprise, and then Zoom is really a different company today in a short period of time, not only through growth, but who are they as a company? How's the company changed? Well, I would say that it actually hasn't changed. We are so fundamentally and profoundly connected to our values around Um, caring for our community and our customers and ourselves. And and so um, I would say it's just, it's solely who we are at the core. We're just bigger. Um, But, you know, Zoom was founded um, by our CEO, Eric, with the idea that we wanted to be extremely customer centric. And so that's, like I said, it's pervasive. So um, I'd say that still lives and, that the customer is always first. And I, when I say customer, I think of not only our external customers, the people that we're serving, but to each other, we are each other's internal customers. And so that's always been in the forefront. Um, but the difference between 
pre-corona and post-corona. Pre-corona, we were scaling about the size of 100 people a month. And now we literally are scaling at 200 people a month. So even no. pre-corona, that's really rapid scale. Um, but post-corona, I mean, we are constantly, like every single month, onboarding 200 people. So, so I would say that's, you know, that's pre and post. Our, our soul is the same, but um, we're just moving faster. So one comment that stood out is you said, we internally treat each other like customers. That's a very different perspective. And I think some companies miss that or are, it's hard to get there. How, how do you achieve that? Um, well, first of all, I think that, you know, part of our intervening process are, is around, you know, um, understanding what does care look like? What does community look like to you? So we certainly try to select for those uh, attributes and it just, it's part of our DNA. It, it, it just, it lives. We are a huge recognition culture, um, lots of kudos. Um, we have, we are very affiliative. There's all kinds of chat channels where people find ways to connect. Um, we'll talk a little bit later about the happy crew, but it, it just, caring is, it's, like I said, it's just the air we breathe. Um, so, I don't know, like, like, you know, that culture, it's like, you can sort of feel it, taste it. Sometimes it's hard to describe, but um, it's just always in the forefront. Eric, when we have all hands calls, the message is consistent. The message is consistent from all of our leaders. Consistency, right. Yeah, it's consistent. Yeah. And, and so, you know, um, in our new book, Scaling Culture, we talk about the balance of you know, there is a balance of not letting your culture get in the way of doing business. And you are certainly in the crossfires. You have to be of that balance, i.e. 200 people a month, but we need to deliver a product. So how do you balance off? Because I know culture is extremely important to Zoom. How do you balance off making sure that you can keep up with the business with the right culturally aligned, screened individuals onboarded? You know, how do you do that? Yeah, it's a really interesting question, Rana. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, um, is that if a culture of happiness and delivering happiness is pervasive, um, what is potentially the price? And, and, um, and I say that because if the uh, expectation is that customers' um, needs come first, it may mean that there is some personal happiness at stake, right? Because you're making a choice. Um, do I serve the customer um, at my own peril, like temp not not like life altering peril, but like, or do I um, sort of take care of myself and you know maybe not be as nice to the customer as I as I should and. I would say that the customer always comes first, right? So it means that, um, I guess I'll give you a very like in the middle of Corona experience is that um, pre-Corona only 18% of our sale, our, for our uh, employees were remote, only 18%. That's a crazy figure at Zoom. Crazy, I think everybody right? assumed it was a hundred, you know, a pre, right. that's, yeah, that's wow, right. so, 18%. Yep, we have a number of, um, and we can talk about this later also, we have a number of um, brick and mortar offices, you know, where culture is birthed. Um, and like everybody else, people like within a week or two days went home and set up home offices, you know, in the bathrooms or bedrooms or kitchen tables and boom, we were all remote. So that's, that's one thing. Um, oh, so just and, stop there for one sec. So. Yep. How was that transition for a company that this is what their this is what their product was? And you also had to transition like everybody else, even though this is your product. That's tell tell us more about that. About was well, it challenging? You know, well, what's challenging? Well, what wasn't challenging was how to use the product, right? Because we're yeah. you know we're like we're fluent. Some people are much more fluent than others, but we're, we're pretty fluent. We use it for internal meetings and things like that. So, but we are no different than any other company that went remote in 24 hours. People right. had to find a space. They had to manage their, their their kids. They had to manage their barking dogs, right? They had to, like, so we were no different than anybody else. But what is different, what was different is that 
we had to still serve customers. So right. and um, more customers, more customers, not just keep, right. not just try to get customers back, not just try to find new customers. It was like, whoa, we went oh. from like outbound to whoa, Houston, we have a problem. There's a lot of inbound coming in now, correct? Our inbound uh, requests came in 20 times, wow. 20 times more than usual. So there was no outbound. Nobody was fishing. Um, everybody was pitching in to service customers. Um, you know, another example is our business development reps. We talked, you know, all they do is fish all day. Hello, would you like Zoom? What do you got? What do you got? And they, that's what they're hired to do, fish. They, they went to the beach and just started answering the phone. They're like, I'm going to yeah. sit on the beach. Yeah, no beach. What they did was the people that were doing those jobs were deployed all throughout the organization. So they were learning, right? Talk about development, right? They were learning new skills. They were learning how to answer Zendex tickets. They were learning how to do things in the order desk. They were going into our own blogs and our own trainings and coaching people on how to use our tool. So uh, as I say, it was painful for them, but now look how employable they are within Zoom because they've had all these different skill sets and all right. this new exposure. It's such a classic, you know, development story. Um, and win-win win were- because continuity for Zoom and win for the individual who can now say, wow, I tried this, I like this, this is win great. Win everywhere, win everywhere. Um, people got to play in new spaces and build new connections. And, you know, trust me, it wasn't play like fun, you know, in retrospect, right? But, um, but they did it. And now people have other avenues that they wouldn't have been exposed to, right? They would have just been, been in their swim lane or, or they wouldn't have been exposed to that expeditiously, right? Right. So um, again, that's like culture building, right? Um, it's like a, like, suffering together, but, you know, we, there was so much pride and passion and honor to keep the world connected. I right. mean, that's profound, right? Uh, but getting back to your original question yes. yeah. is remember, so our Zoomies who were feeling pride and passion and privilege to help the world connected we're also dealing with the fear of the virus and you know, homeschooling kids and people in their families who may be out of work as a result, people who are sick or died. So that is, I think, what makes um, us being in the eye of the storm interesting, right? Because we are all human. And as Zoomies, we're serving the world. But when we talk about the price, I think that's that's kind of the piece that I want to ignore. No, absolutely. Um, you know, but I, I'll go back to this question too of of because you were already hiring quickly at, at hundred a month. You're moving lightning fast, but then to double that, how did you balance? Because and did you have to say, okay, we used to do these ten things. We can only do seven right now. We ha- we have to move forward. Was there a balance, or was there no? We're holding the line. We just have to put more people on this. You know, you know, how did, how did you balance that with the, with the, the hiring, how fast you had to move and how important culture is? Um, so I guess every um, department had to figure out what are the new priorities, right? What, what needs to shift in flight? Um, so, and because we, I'm going to answer your question, but because we scaled so fast, right? things that happen organically, you can discover along the way, right? And make improvements along the way. But yep. you know, a system that is, I'm just making this up, meant for hundred and all of a sudden has 20 million is like, what? you know, so how do we reinvent and figure this out? Um, boy, we were, um, I would say, again, two things, hyper-focused on the customer and super deliberate in the priorities that we had to focus on in order to keep the world connected. I mean, I just think that if you're always looking through just to, right, like if you use culture and values as a filter, right? If you have, you know, you know a few values that you have to make decisions, if you have to make your decisions around a few values, then, then it's clear. So I would say, you know, if if um, 
caring for customers, right? And keeping the world connected is, and, and, and culture is so pervasive. They, they just, everything else went to the wayside. Got it. Uh, so you anchored in on a few key things, it sounds like, correct? You kind of said, here's what's really important. So these are things we absolutely have to, uh, you know, hire for, screen, and onboard with, correct? That's right. And we need to, and are sort of like, again, we're still moving fast. Things aren't slowed down. Um, we will now, um, again, along the way, reinforcing, we need to be, again, deliberate. Deliberate is intentional, is a word that I can't say enough, right? We know, we know we need to be deliberate. We know we need to um, live culture lo more loudly. We have to amplify culture more deliberately. We have to ensure those messages and the behaviors that are associated with those messages live in a much more thoughtful way than we did when we're all sort of in the office living it. Right, right. Otherwise, otherwise, it I think it becomes extinct. At this point, Ron, we have more people that have never stepped into a Zoom office than, than, than lived in one. Mm. So we have all these remote people that, you know, haven't touched what it looks like. And so... Let me go back to this term that I love, which I've heard you say a few times, Zoomies. Can you yeah, create please. Zoomies that haven't been to the office? It was being, coming to the office and being close to people, was that very important? Or are you learning now that, no, we can still do that without people coming to the office? T tell me, tell us about Zoomies, explain it, and then, and then are you able to do that today? Well, we need to do it today. And uh, that's everyone's job. So um, I think it's, certainly easier to um, understand what it means to be a Zoomie by being surrounded by Zoomies physically, right? Um, because you can observe Zoomie behavior. But um, it means, again, we need to, first of all, on, we'll talk about onboarding again later, but you yes. know, we dip the Zoominess uh, for five hours on, on the first day, um, but we, we model the way. So we'll, we'll go ahead, Jody. Just, just model the way. Yeah, but let's let's get it. If onboarding is important, because it is, go ahead. Let's let's hear about the onboarding. Um, it'll flow well. So, in all of my bazillion years of working, what's onboarding usually? It's like maybe a five minute video of the company's history. Build the paperwork. A, yep, the CEO says welcome. You do the paperwork and its benefits and compliance and bye bye. Have have a good career. Happy. And for all those listening that do that, uh, stop yeah. doing that. Uh, uh. Right. Yeah. So that that is absolutely not our experience. Um, so we have a five-hour um, orientation, and it is 100% focused on culture and products light. In other words, um, Everybody learns about our products um, in a super user-friendly way. So if you don't have to, uh, you, you don't have to know the technicalities of the product, but if somebody bumps into you in the airport and says, oh, tell me about Zoom phone, you could at least say what it does, right? So we dip people not only by um, content is about head and heart, right? So what does it feel like to deliver happiness? What does it look like? What does it taste like? Share your stories about what it means to deliver happiness. Um, we do we use our tool, right? So we do tons of breakouts. So you have a hundred people on a on a on a five hour call. You're constantly mixing up and ah, so they're all, we're all in this together. There's, there's a bunch. Together. I was trying to visualize this. I, oh, I couldn't. Okay. Um, we uh, we we talk about our customers in uh, in the middle of the pandemic. Um, so. Um, you know, we were in the war room for the World Health Organization. Like, so we have videos and pictures. We ask people to go into social media and find ways that Zoom is being used to keep the world connected. Um, so people just walk out with a sense of pride. We literally um, put them in an elevator and have them put together an elevator pitch. So again, if they're in a bowling alley and someone says, you work for Zoom, you can just quickly say what Zoom does. So there's so much camaraderie and personal connection and visceral connection to our care values. We don't talk about compliance. 
we say, you you know, you got, we've got amazing benefits and you'll come back sometime this week and we have another hour on benefits. And so it's about connection, connection to our brand, pride in our brand and um, understanding the, the, again, the privilege it is to be part of a company that is doing so much good for the world. Right. Uh, that has a, a strong purpose. Walk away right? like with, um, you know, oh, that was so great. People never expect that from an orientation. So back to the five hours, how much of that is uh, Zoomy led and how much is I'm going to watch a video and or what does the interactive look like? You said there's, there could be a lot of people, obviously you're doing lots of hiring. There's a big group. We're all onboarding. Give us a snapshot. What's that look like? The five hours. Um, it is a combo plan of um, like a, two minute video clip uh, followed by, so we, what we do is we have people play in the tool, right? So we say, cause you know, they haven't done it before. So we want you to annotate this picture right in chat, you know, blast it out. Um, so we have, there's never more than a, maybe five minutes of talking from a Zoomie. So. Wow, never more than five minutes. Rooms. And very yeah. interactive. You're talking about very I participate, interactive. right? Totally participatory. Um, Love that. Yeah. So no, no talking heads because that's what benefits does, right? For an hour, you're like, wah, 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 Charlie Brown's teacher, wah, wah, wah. And the other thing is that if you if you remember your first day at work or your first day at school, you're so nervous. Like, how do you retain all that information about compliance and and you know my benefits and what's the which which plan should I pick? Like, you're not. So we want to create a toward state if you want to talk about the the right the neurology of it right so it so people can retain the information and it's like look this is where you we're gonna here's a tour this is where you go for this this is where you go for that and it's all followed up right with sort of you know like the, the written stuff but super interactive um no talking heads so so it sounds like this experience is more about the experience. Hey, get you excited. This is your team. This is what work experience is going to look like. Not to your point, you know, there's so many details. It can be, and, and I feel like a lot of companies today get it wrong where it's just information, information. I'm dizzy. Day one, I'm dizzy. Totally. I'm not excited. I'm nope. dizzy. Nope. It's total shutdown mode. So the idea of orientation is to not only confirm, dang it. I made the right decision by coming here or wow, I am so excited. I was selected to be part of this, but now I'm really Jones to go in and just blow it out for Zoom, right? So that, I mean, if I, I like, I, I think if there were like two objectives, <laughs> two objectives, I mean, it's really about dipping in the culture, but it is, I am so excited to walk out of here today and give Zoom my all. Um, that's it. And then the rest you'll figure out, like the rest will help you navigate. That, most, that, I, I love, is not that. It's interesting that, that a, a company that's so successful and growing so quickly is keeping it that simple. You're keeping it simple, by the way, right? And just like the, 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 the service, just like Zoom is simple. I love that. Um, and so what kind of feedback are you getting? Because I assume, you know, Jody, you probably talk to some people and say, hey, Ron, you were hired last week. How did that go? What was your experience like? What does that oh, conversation that get, look like? What's the feedback? get real-time feedback. People are like, that's the best. Or Because they're, can you imagine on your first day, you're like, are you kidding? I have to be on a Zoom call for five hours for new hire training. How much is that going to suck? That's what that's, people that's walk That's going to be the right? first reaction. That has to right? be a natural reaction. Five hours? I've never been at a five hours, you know, call about orientation. And so we just surprise and delight them. And so the feedback surprise we get is the best delight. orientation I've ever had, or I loved the breakout rooms. Uh, I really got to know people, you know, in a way that I, I wouldn't have had a chance to. Um, it was so cool to play in the tool and, you know, live the experience. So that's, that's the feedback we get. Um, and we're always iterating, right? Because there's always new new content, um, some new cool um, like commercial about Zoom or something like that. Um, and stories. We, stories. We have a um, chat. We're a big chat culture. Um, we have a chat called Cool and Inspiring Stories. Uh, and 
every day there's cool, new new things posted, right? So the first adoption, you know, you know, a marriage, um, uh, court cases being being, you know, uh, good ones done through Zoom, all kinds of stuff like that. So we say, okay, Zoomies, you know, we have all these different kinds of chat channels. Do you want to cook? Join this channel. You want to, you know, talk about your kids? Join this channel. So. Um, you know, we just sort of give them a tour of the, the unlimited possibilities to make connection. It's wow. about like, connections, right? So you talked also about Happy Cruise, because I assume that is part of the sustainability. T- tell me more and tell us more about Happy Cruise. Yeah, so um, we have a Happy Crew. Um, there, I would say that, um, you know, you know, you know about culture. Everyone has a responsibility of being a culture carrier. The Happy Crew are our Uber culture carriers, and they are volunteers. Um, so they have day jobs, and above and beyond their day jobs, they organize all kinds of activities. We have Zoomween coming up this this um, this week. Um, they have Take Your Parents to Work Day. That just I, I came from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Take Your Parents to Work Day was not part of our thing, right? I'm like, wow. Um, how fun is that? Take your parents to work day. Um, they do all kinds of when when the offices were open, local experiences. So let's just say you were part of the Denver Happy Crew. We have a big office in Denver. So they have, um, you know, they celebrate um, welcoming, they celebrate birthdays, they um, go out together and serve the community. They um, you know, have kickball and softball. So all kinds of live activities. And so now that we're remote, you know, we have to, again, be more deliberate, more intentional around how we engage people. So um, I have a date with a couple of people on Happy Crew um, tomorrow night to stick my hands in a pumpkin. And you've been invited. So so the Happy Crew said, hey, Jody, there's an event we want you to come. So they're, they're, okay. That's right. And so um, we have Diwali's being celebrated through Happy Crew sponsorship. Um, so there's this thing, I don't know if you heard of it, the Jerusalem dance. No, please tell. Okay, so I'll tell you, I'm not an expert, but, um, and then I can send you, maybe people in your audience know about this. It's, it's apparently not hit the U.S. yet, but it's the Africana dance. I'm probably bastardizing it. I apologize, whoever or originated the dance. <laughs> and it's, so there are people all over the world doing this choreographed dance. Is this a TikTok thing? No. No, I don't think it's a TikTok, okay. TikTok all thing. Right. Um, and and we're trying to, you know, we want to get the licensure, like you have to do it legally. And we are going to, assuming we get all the license, we're going to, the Happy Crew is going to sponsor um, getting as many Zoomies as possible to learn the dance and then all do it virtually at the same time. What's that called when everybody does it? What are those dances called where everyone does it like on a lawn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, like, it, 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 it's called, um, don't come to me one second. It's like what you do at a bar mitzvah. Anyway, right. um, so, so we're in the midst of planning that um, and it's going to be really cool. But, um, and if, if you, I'll send you the link, but if you look at it, you've got people like in a, um, that are in a safari, like with rhinos in the back doing it. And then you've got firemen doing it. And then you've got people in a, at a farm doing it. It's really, so that's, that's one of the things that we'll, we'll be doing again, bring people in um, and get people excited to touch and experience culture. So what a great way to include everybody in one experience, right? For inclusion perspective. Uh, that, that sounds wonderful. And it, it's non-work related. This is a way for people to connect, have fun, uh, share stories, because there's going to be lots of stories after that. And the one thing about the Happy Crew that really stuck out is you said they are volunteers, not voluntold. Oh, yeah. Right. So there's there are some companies, and I know this because we had a Happy Crew roundtable with other companies that have similar Happy Crews that are called different things. Um, They're not paid to do this volunteer, to do this volunteer event, volunteer experience. Unlike other companies that 
have the equivalent of happy crew crews that are that is their job so they're paid it's their sole um, job that is their sole job and not right wrong um eric believes that um it it's you know you should want to as a culture carrier go above and beyond and there's a lot of i say a lot of psychic rewards so if you're doing it for a bonus then you're not in it for the right thing but if you're doing it for you know, the own, your own psychic reports of understanding your contribution to keeping this place so sacred, right? A sacred place to work, then that's why people are doing it, right? No, no one's, no, everybody knows the bonus comes from your heart, not from your, not from something external. So it's just a choice. Um, I mean, it, it's perfectly fine that other companies have dedicated people that are getting paid to do it, but um, that's just not the way um, Zoom wants to do it. And I love that. And, and I certainly um, am aligned with that. Uh, you know, my security company, the same thing. So many people were, were doing things that were adding value to the culture on their own, own time because they were so engaged. But I'm curious, how do you identify a happy crew? How do you start off by saying, wow, geez, Ron over there is just kind of naturally doing this. Or what are we yeah. seeing? What are the attributes we're seeing to say, hey, Ron, would you like to now be involved with the happy crew? Oh, so are you, I love that question. And I'm going to tell you um, why um, I love it because we're in the middle of designing a campaign to recruit happy crew team captains. And um, I'll tell you that because we've doubled, right? There half our population. So the, Happy crews that were part of the brick and mortar locations are already embedded, right? People know who those happy crew members are. Um, so they have a, a connection. But the other half who are remote, um, now we're in the process of um, creating regional captains. So, you know, Northwest region who isn't tied to a location, we need to recruit a happy crew captain to sort of own that region. Um, and that new remote happy crew captain is going to be paired off with an office captain to sort of learn the ropes, right? So we can transfer. Right. Uh, so we're in the process of literally designing that campaign because the happy crew has to double. We need all these new team captains. So um, we haven't got as far as like, do you have to interview for it? I, I, I can't imagine that would be so. Um, I already have one person who, you know, through the happy crew vape rate fine, um, you know, reached out to me and said, I've, I've done this in other companies. I really, really love culture. Can I be a part of it? So, um, I think it'll be a combination of, let's call them out. Who's this going to be? Let's celebrate yeah. with them. Who's this going to be? Well, I Can haven't we... gone public with it yet. Okay. So, All um, right. It's, it's a, a, a wonderful uh, woman who just joined. Um, but so, Joey, anyway. the, challenge, the challenge is going to be, and, and I assume that's why you're doing the office connect, but, but if I'm a happy crew member who's never been to a brick and mortar office, I now need to, because the happy crew member, I'm going to build an event and invite people to come to this experience. What strategies are they going to use? Because trust relationships are going to be tough out of the gates. I haven't really met anyone. I'm not just going to send out a blind email and say, I've got this pumping, punk, pumpkin carving contest. Fine. If the culture is good, people may join, but what strategies do I implement to get people engaged and build relationships throughout the organization with people I haven't, I've only Zoomed with? Well, you know what it's like to Zoom, right? Yes, what, ma'am. What, what's, lo what's lost in, you, you tell me, Ron. Yeah. You just met me. Yeah. What's lost in this that, that would be gained if you saw me face to face? Well, that's a great question. I thought we were going to go the other side, which what's gained by this. Uh, well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to the okay. get to that in the other way. So, what's what? lost? That's a really great question. There's probably not a whole lot lost, okay. right? Um, right. So you're you, because I can because really it comes down to to you know I see you, That's I right. can see your body language, I can still you know feel your energy from a Zoom perspective. I get tone. So I yeah, that's a really great question. I guess I can't see anything that is. Lost. We can't go for a walk together in the no, forest. We can't go for a walk. We can't eat. We can't eat lunch. Oh, well, we can eat yeah. lunch together virtually, but not. Well, we can, we can have lunch virtually. My problem is, I'm a sharer. I want a bite of your food, and so I wouldn't okay. enjoy that because if you have something tasty, I want some. 
That's right. I can't pass along my homemade Rice Krispie treats with extra brown butter. But um, <laughs> so that's my point. You know, great point. Um, people talk about, well, how do you do remote culture if it's about uh, trust and relationships? And this is trust and relationships. This is building a connection. Um, and if you didn't have it before in your culture, you know, you're challenged to create it remotely, right? But we had it before and we care about it. And like I said, it's in the forefront. And so we have to work harder at reaching out and making sure that those connections are made and being deliberate about storytelling and making this connection. But let's let's go to the other side because because this has come up multiple times in webinars we've done, and it certainly is talked about in, in the new book, is what are the benefits? What are the new benefits to video conferencing? Because that's where I thought we were going with the question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's some really significant benefits. You know, we always say, here's what you know, here's what you don't know, here's what you don't know that you don't know. And uh, so let's talk about benefits. Uh, you know, what, what do you think are some of the benefits to this that we didn't have before? Um, so I will say... Here are our benefits. Um, one is everybody is an equal square. Right. So um, inclusion is um, interestingly higher than it is it was before because everybody has an equal square. We have multiple avenues for people to be heard. Introverts can chat, annotate. Um, extroverts can talk. So um, I think that because of our gallery view um, for uh, people who are leading and recognize that they're introverts, they may be more, again, intentional in saying, hey, Ron, I haven't heard from you. Would you like to share? So that's what that's one thing. The other is um, the intimacy. By the way, this is, I think this is profoundly intimate because you're so focused, right? Like you can't, ah. work, right? you're, you're so focused. I, I, I'm looking at you. I know when you're distracted. Um, but you kind of are afraid to be distracted, right? Because you, there you are, right, right in the forefront. Um, I understand more about your personal life. So you are more than one dimension to me. I see that you have kids. Um, I see that you have a picture of your parents behind you if in fact you're not using a background. We, we love our backgrounds at Zoom. Um, so- um, Those are real bird, bird houses. Yep. Totally see your birdhouses. I, um, by the way, what does your background say about you today? So I change my background every day. Yesterday was Taco Tuesday. You know, it's Wednesday. I had my Taco Tuesday background on. Maybe I have a picture of my kids. Maybe I have a picture of um, a waterfall and you say, wow, Jody, that's such a beautiful picture. What's that from? Oh, it's from a trip I took. So you're learning something about me. So, um, you know, this, the, the, uh, you know, you're, personal setting is in the forefront. And so I think those are all the ways our Absolutely. technology, right? Um, other things uh, I can, you know, I'll keep going on. Well, this is great. So um, our technology, uh, I have this whole theory. I know I should write a book. Ron, if you want to write this book with, write let's this do book. it together. Don't steal my idea, but because um, it takes so much work, I'm sure to write a book. The idea of, it used to be that our work lives were much more separate from our personal, our, our personal lives, um, but play, play, which is usually our personal lives, has had to, at least for Zoomies, come into, come into work. Um, uh, one of the features we have in our tool is um, you could put on a beret, you could put on horns, you could put on a goatee, or you can make your lips purple. And so um, we had um, 62 managers graduate our leading happy managerial excellence program and everybody put on their graduation cap and we play dun dun you know like the graduation song so that's a way of um using our tool to play and again create unity and fun and things that are pervasive in our culture so um did i skip anything that was in your book that or did i make no it you know what you actually brought up more points that we probably didn't cover off. And some of the key things, you know, that, that really stuck out. Um, one is just really getting to know the behind the scenes. Never do you get to tour a coworker's home or meet their family or see their pictures on the wall, get to know them at a deeper level. So I love that spot on. And the introvert thing is really uh, interesting too. And the equality of the screen size, because, you know, and I've heard, you know, from Shannon who works with us, who's introverted that, 
you know, in a conference setting, he felt much more comfortable to speak. And that was interesting. I hadn't really thought about that before. And so in, in a larger setting, he was comfortable in his chair, in his own home with his toast or whatever made him comfortable. And he felt much more comfortable and confident to speak in a group setting versus standing up in the hotel conference totally. and, and just being like, oh my God, this is going to not go well. And I'm in my own head on this thing. So it's very interesting, all the positives, and we couldn't find negatives. This is really, really interesting. I mean, yeah. well, let, me, let me challenge one thing. I see a lot online about people saying, well, we need to get back to the office. And, and this is typically old, older school individuals. You can't collaborate the same way. I've, I've seen a lot of posts on that. What are your, what are your thoughts? Wait, can I just say one thing really funny? Well, I thought it was really funny. Yeah. Um, about there's nothing lost when you're on, on a Zoom call, on a Zoom video call. Um, yesterday, my boss said, wait, wait a minute, and got up and went to her door to check something. And my new employee, who's wonderful, said, oh, I didn't know Lynn had legs. It was the first time she <laughs> saw Lynn's legs. Um, so yeah, no, nothing's lost except the legs. But um, how do I answer the question? Um, we should, no, you can only build, you only collaborate when you're back. Yeah, yeah you really yeah. need, you know, to yeah, collaborate yeah. properly, yeah. we need five humans in this yeah. boardroom to have yeah. a proper collaboration session. What's Zoom doing about that? Or how, how do you... Well, um, so um, again, I'm not the technical guru, but we just introduced like moving, well, utilizing our, our breakout rooms. If you've ever done, it's fantastic. They are fantastic. Yes. yes, they're so great. And then now we have introduced this where you can like put the stickies on the wall and move the stickies around, something that you would do if you were you know live. Um, look, if you're not building, like physically building a model car together where you have to mold the clay and, you know, um, there, there's nothing lost, right? I mean, um, in, in the ability to, you know, break out, work together closely and, and, and move away and come back, I don't think that there's anything lost. Um, I mean, it, it's certainly nice to kind of hang, but we're, we're experimenting with things like opening a meeting. So uh, opening a meeting 15 minutes early and letting people just hang before the meeting starts to create some of that spontaneous water cooler stuff. So if the meeting starts at one, you can join at 1245 and just come in and say hello in the waiting room. So those are some of the things that we're trying to be, again, deliberate about. Um, I don't think there's, I don't, I would say that for, for what people think is lost, they're gaining, you know, they don't have to commute, that, you know, that they're gaining right. time, more quality time with their families. Like there's that um, argument. Um, I could say that the, um, because we've done the survey and seen who wants to return to the office. And of course, this was before the offices had made the decision to completely close. Um, the, the younger people miss the office culture because so much of their social life is derived from right. let's go out and play softball, you know, whatever. Um, but the older, the older people are like, I'm, I'm happy not to have to go in. Um, even the extroverts who love, 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 like roaming the halls seem to be adjusting and we will always have people that much prefer to be in the office for that, you know, high fiving. Um, but I don't think people are going to want to be in the office five days again. You know, I was, just, flexibility. I was thinking, <clears throat> you know, when, when the pandemic first hit, um, we are a lot more empathetic, more uh, uh, forgiving, when someone comes to a meeting, if you were to meet with me today at two o'clock at my office and you know, pre-pandemic, Jody, if you didn't show up till 10 after, like quarter after, I'm a little annoyed, but five, 10 after works. Um, and so, um, you know, when I think of, of, of phone calls, it's on the, it's, it, it, you know, if you, if we said there's a call too, there's no five after it's two o'clock. I was kind of like that with zoom. And now lately <clears throat> I've kind of moved back to, no, it's okay. It's it's like it's like a meeting now, and it took me a while to get my head around that. Where I'm like, oh no, Jody's not zoomed in yet. No different than she's still parking the car. I've become a lot more softer and and open to this idea of well, with Zoom, it's okay. Show up a few minutes late. What are what are your thoughts on that? Are you seeing that? I'll get. It's like I'll get there. Well, listen, you know, people are hardwired to be late or early. Like 
my husband has got this thing. I don't know. Maybe, I'm sure some of your viewers can appreciate this. Either they are this or they're married to one. Um, we need to leave at the airport for the airport at, at noon, even though the flight is at eight o'clock at night. You're talking about my, my wife now. Eight. You're at my what, wife. What do you mean? Well, just in case there's traffic or in case there's like a, I don't know. Okay. Pandemic. So, all right, family, like you've been telling me, we've got to leave at noon. So even though that's ridiculous, okay, we want, we don't want to, you know, upset you, dad. We'll, we'll, we'll be ready at noon. 1130, pacing back and forth. What do you mean? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Wait, wait you said noon. So there are people that have a propensity to show up early and they're the same people that have a propensity, no matter what, they're going to show up late, whether it's a Zoom meeting or an airport, like run into the terminal, whatever it is, they're going to show up late. I could tell you that there is certain consideration, right? Two o'clock, wait a minute. We've got um, three participants for supposed to have five. Where are those two people? And they get pinged, they get pinged, right. they, get, they get pinged. So you know, you, you sort of learn people's patterns. So and so is always late. So yeah, maybe some of those rules of rules of have, have like lag, you know, got a little lax. But um, everyone's sort of considerate of time, right? Mm -hmm. So um, you talked about a recognition culture. And I kind of want to end with, you know, as you're continuing to scale, what are things that maybe you're not doing today, Jody? That you, that you guys are thinking about? What does the future look like? You talked about happy crews and and breaking them up into new captains. What are some other things that to sustain this wonderful culture you need to be thinking about in the future? So we need to. Um, I have this idea that I want to execute around, um, like you said, storytelling and folklore. I have a vision of a round table of people that were pre-IPO and people who were right in the middle of the coronavirus and people who got hired, you know, uh, two years after the coronavirus. And like, how do we sit around the campfire and share those stories? Um, like, like the archives. Right. I, I, we need to, and I want our leaders to talk about, um, what are their challenges in upholding culture in the midst of this crisis too, um, and and there and thereafter? So there are more things that we need to do and learn along the way, um, and we need to feel if we don't feel like our culture um, is in jeopardy every day, then then we're in trouble. We need and it to won't see. be top of the list. It won't be one of the key focuses. Right. It right. literally, the reason why it keeps me up at night, because I had a thought, I'm like, why am I so, why am I not sleeping? I'm like, this is the, everything's great is because my role, like, again, we are all responsible. Every employee is responsible for shepherding culture. But my job as like head of talent and organizational development, it's like literally my job is I've never been in a company um, that um, gets me um, and doesn't say, wow, oh my gosh, Judy, you're so transparent. You care so much. You don't belong here. Um, All right. They lean into this. You found right? your home. I found my home and I want to protect my home. I Love really that. want to protect my home. And so that speaks to um, the culture, right? That right, right there. That's right. That's absolutely right. The and I need to create that sense of urgency with everyone I touch. Well, it's interesting, Jody, because, you know, the feeling I get when we speak is that you're so, um, you haven't lost your energy and your drive for culture. You're, you're a senior executive. You've been doing this for some time. And, it, you know, you're still, I feel like, I, I, I don't know what you would have been like 20 years ago. So if this was the same or you've just kept it up, you're, you know, it's, it's incredible to see most senior executives we don't see with that fire in their belly on, no, I'm all in on culture. I love this. Uh, it's really nice to see. It's really refreshing. Thank you. I um, I am so, like I said, privileged to be a part of this and to be understood. This is who I am. This is who I've been all my life. And it's hard to be this in a company that doesn't buy this. Right? right. Like this is authentically right. Jody. I have always had this energy. I've always been this transparent. I've always been this direct. And I've always cared this much. And so if that, if this, this Jody does not align, you know it, right? You know it when those people don't quite 
fit. And that's been my whole career until I came let me go back to this point because I think some companies get caught. We talk about this in the book, a culture of default or design. Zoom has designed a culture in a specific way. Uh, we feel that's the best way. We, that's our belief. That's the best system. With cultures of default, you get pockets. Okay, this culture in this office like this. And this is what it was, you know, one of my aha moments when I had the security business. It was almost like I had franchises, you know, Vancouver, oh, and right. Toronto, different companies. You know, I was I, really, it, it hurt me. Um and I knew I had to make a change. And so I, my thought was that, you know, with a culture that's designed in such a specific way, then it is more black and white. You really know who fits and who doesn't yeah. versus this default. Totally. Oh, you're over in this pocket. You're over. You may fit on this day, not that day. Comments on totally. that. Your thoughts? Yeah. I mean, if somebody behaves in a counterculture way, it's literally called out. That is not our culture. So um, we have all hands. So that's like in the olden days, we called it a town hall. I'm like, what's all hands? Well, it's a, you know, so we have these all hands calls, town halls um, every month. And, um, and by the way, I remember the day where it used to be, so our platform can have a thousand people in gallery view. And after it's a thousand and one has to go to webinar. And I remember the day where we literally had to give up seeing everybody's faces and go to webinar. But anyway, so all hands calls. People can write in and ask any question or make any comment in an anonymous way and they get addressed. So they're, they're sent in ahead of time. Some are um, done in writing and some are done live. And if, and if there's something that is um, going on or a question, it might say, this is counterculture. So, or, we need to protect our culture. So I'm just driving on your point, Ron, when it is deliberate and it is intentional and it is clear, when it's not, it's clear also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Jody. I want to thank you. It's always a pleasure to see you and speak to you. Uh, I love you. your energy and your passion about culture. Uh, thanks so much. And, and yeah, thanks for joining us pleasure. today. Yeah, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, share what's special about our company. Really appreciate it. For more information on Jody Rabinowitz and everything related to scaling culture, please see the show description for details. We'll be back next week with another incredible guest. 